Okay, Latin 4. Today we are going to study a passage which is what constitutes an epic simile. Now the fact is, we are getting down to the point where we maybe have, including today, three actual more lessons. And so we're going to be really hitting kind of some of the high points. An epic simile is something very important to have experienced if you have read any Virgil. Now, a simile, of course, is this is like this. A metaphor doesn't use the word like. And so if we were to say, Mary is a rock in times like these, that's a metaphor. The simile equivalent of that would be, Mary is like a rock in times like these. Here's a historical example, Robert Burns. My love is like a red, red rose. Now, at first glance, what do you think about that? Is it good? Is it bad? I think it's good, especially the, the repetition of the word red. We see it, it's, it, like it symbolizes like warmth. Shakespeare also uses a simile about love. Is love a tender thing? It is too rough, too rude, too boisterous, and it pricks like a thorn. So in that case, he's describing love also as a rose, like a rose has thorns, and that's not a good thing. An epic simile is, well, epic. Now, Homer is the one who invented this, and they are scattered throughout the Iliad and the Odyssey, and the overall idea is, in the middle of the narrative, the poet describes an event through a major simile. He's going to be telling you a story, and then he's going to basically pause the story and say, it's like when this happens, and he's going to go into some depth. It's not going to be just a one-liner. It's not going to be like, oh, it's like when storm stop. No, and that's going to be the point. This is about the storm stopping, but you're going to see it's very involved. Now the background again is Juno, with the help of Aeolus, has created a massive storm. The Trojan fleet has been hit by this storm. Many ships have been overturned. People have drowned. Aeneas himself is in peril. And Neptune, who is the ruler of the seas, is angry. He knows, we saw this in a passage we studied earlier, he knows Juno has to be behind this, and he's about to use his power to end the storm. So rather than just say, and so Neptune ended the storm, Virgil is going to use an epic simile. He's going to say, it's like when, and then he's going to describe a different scenario in which chaos is turned into order. Okay, we begin. Ac veluti magno in populo cum saipe coorta est seditio. And it's like, okay, so ac veluti is and like, understood, it's like, and it's like cum, it's like when. Now, notice you have studied enough Latin and you know the cum meaning when, and it's always been at the beginning of the sentence, right? Here it is deep in the sentence because of poetic word order. It's like when seditio, sedition. Sedition, if you're not familiar with the term, is like insurrection or people rising up against authority. It's like when sedition, coorta est, has arisen. Coortor is a deponent verb, and so coorta est is the perfect tense, has arisen. Where has this sedition arisen? Magno in populo, saipe often, in a great people. Think for a moment. Who's Virgil talking about? Who is a great people that Virgil is possibly alluding to? 
I think he's talking about the Romans themselves. He's going to be describing how the Romans had a time of chaos. And someone is going to bring that chaos into order. Saevitque animis ignobile vulgus. And que. Virgil's going to be doing this a couple times in a row. He's using que as his main word for and to start new sentences. And ignobile vulgus the ignoble horde. Now this is talking about like the common people who Virgil is describing as being generally susceptible to like rioting and like losing control. And the ignoble horde, saiwit, seethes. We have this verb way back. It was salvius Saiwebat, Salvius was seething, understood with anger. Where are they seething? Animis, in their spirits. Okay, so sedition has arisen in a great people, and the ignoble horde seethes in their spirits. Yamque faces et saxa volant. And, there again, Virgil's just using que as our end, yum, already. And already, spakes et saxa are going to wolant. Fakes means firebrands. Now, what I want you to picture, have you ever seen like a horror movie where the villagers finally like go storm the castle and they've all got like torches and pitchforks and things like that? That's basically what Virgil's describing here. And already firebrands et saxa. And rocks, what do they do? Wolant, fly. So again, the people are out of control. They're, they're like got torches, they got rocks, and they're, they're throwing these things at authority. Furor arma ministrat. Furor, furor, we have the English word. It just means like out of control anger. So what does out of control anger do? Ministrat. The word minister is related to it. To supply. Fuhrer supplies the arms. Understood the weapons. Now the idea here is you're, you're so angry. You're so angry and you want to lash out at somebody. You actually, you look around yourself at anything you can turn into a weapon. It doesn't matter. Like it could be a book and you're going to like throw it at somebody. Fuhrer supplies the arms, the weapons, because anything right now for this ignoble horde will do for them to lash out at authority. Tum, pietate grauem ac meritis si forte virum quem conspexere. Then, if, See, now the word order is going to be nonsense here. So then, if forte, by chance, then, if by chance, they have caught sight of. Do you know what we have here, people? This is once again an example of the third person plural, perfect tense, alternative poetic form. Conspexere is the same thing as conspexerunt, they have caught sight of. Now, what they have caught sight of is a virum. Not just a virum, but aliquem. And I'm going to remind you in a moment why the word C means this is actually not quem, but aliquem. And this virum is described as being Grauem. What he's grauem in is pietate and meritis. Let's dig in. Then if by chance they have caught sight of some man. I remember just a little while before quarantine, we were going over something and we talked about the weird thing that after the word see, words like aliquem, which would mean some, 
for some strange reason, no one really knows why, after the word see, the Ali of Aliquem drops off. And so, because you have C, we interpret quem here as aliquem, so virum quem means some man. Then, if by chance they have caught sight of some man, grauem, serious. Now, literally, it means heavy, but we even use heavy in English metaphorically as like, oh, the situation's very heavy, meaning it's very serious. What he is serious in is pietate, in piety. And for the Romans, piety does not just mean religiosity. Piety means loyalty to everything his destiny implies. So loyalty to the state, loyalty to his family. It's just loyalty to everything one should be loyal in. And so he is serious in such piety. He is also serious in merits, ac meritis. So here's what's going on. The crowd is going crazy. And then all of a sudden, they look over there. And you know what they see? They see a man, some man. He is serious in piety and merits. And they realize he's not joining in. He's not going crazy. He's actually, from the look on his face, he is disapproving of the chaos that we, the ignoble horde, are creating. And do you know what we, the ignoble horde, are going to do? We're going to look at him, we're going to go, Oh, God. Oh, God, he's right. Oh, we're out of control. He's, he's the one. He's the one that we should be following. He is, after all, pietate grauem ac meritis. And then here's the thing. Here's what they do. Silent. They fall silent. So after they have seen this guy and they realize that they are the ones who are wrong, they fall silent. Arectisque auribus adstant. Once again, Virgil is just using que to mean and. And adstant. They stand present. What do they stand present with? Arectis auribus with alert ears. They're going to actually stop what they're doing and they're going to say, okay, okay, serious guy, tell us, tell us what we need to hear. Ille regit dictis animos et pectora mulcet. Ille, that one. What does he do? He rules. The root of regit is the same of regem, king. So he rules. What does he rule? He rules spirits. Remember, just a moment ago, it was the ignoble horde that was out of control animis in their spirits. But he rules spirits. What does he rule them with? Dictis. With things having been spoken. All he has to do is speak to them and he can calm them down and they will follow him. For what does he do? Molket. He soothes. He soothes pectora, chests. Now we get the word pectoral muscles from this. But what does it mean to soothe chests? It means to soothe the emotions that reside in chests. At least the ancients understood it that way. For instance, angers. But we also speak of love residing in chests. Seek Cunctus pelagi cecidit fragor. So remember, this whole thing was a simile. Just like this happens, so also now this. Remember, we were talking about the ocean. The word seek means thus. So here comes the epic simile payday. Just like this, so in the same way this. So just as a serious man can calm down a rioting horde of people, so in the same way, thus, cunctus fragor, the whole crash, the whole crash pelagi of the sea. What has it done? Kekidit has fallen. So what you have to picture here is like the storm is raging, the sea is like wild, all of a sudden, bah! It's over. It 
falls. The sea is now once again. The whole crash of the sea has fallen. Aikora postquam prospiciens genitor, caeloque invectus aperto flectit equo. So Neptune's work is done. We're going to basically have him ride out into the sunset here, having solved the problem. Postquam, after. The father, genitor. Now, this is basically a synonym of pater. Genitor means the one who begets. So he's like the, he's the father of the seas. So the father, prospiciens, looking out over. What's he looking out over? Aikora, the seas. Que, and. And what is he? He is Kylo invectus aperto. He is having been carried in the open sky. Now, folks, take a look. He is having been carried. Where is he having been carried? In the open skies. You see, literally, he is in the open skies. Flectit equos turns the horses. Remember, Neptune is always depicted as riding on this chariot with horses through the sea. So again, having looked out over the seas, that is the seas that are now calm, having been carried in the open sky, remember now the storm is gone, he turns the horses. Kuru que volans dat lora secundo. And volans. Flying. This is the second time this verb has come up in the passage. Remember, earlier it was the thakes et saxa, the firebrands and rocks that were flying. Now he is flying. And flying, what does he do? Dot lora. He gives reins. Now, in English idiom, I guess it would be like to, to snap the reins, you know, because he's like in this chariot. Where does he snap the reins? He snaps the reins, kuru secundo, in a favorable chariot. Once again, he is literally in the favorable chariot. Okay, people, you have now experienced an epic simile. So, as a final point, who is Virgil talking about here? Who is that man who is serious in piety and merits, who has brought chaos into order in magno populo, in the great people? I think, obviously, he is alluding to Caesar Augustus, who, out of the civil wars that followed the assassination of Julius Caesar, would emerge as the solitary ruler of Rome, and who did find a way to forge the true actual empire. Augustus was the one, after all, who was funding the project of the writing of the Aeneid. And so it's probably not a coincidence that the first time Virgil includes an epic simile in his work, it is a tribute to his patron.